Hello friends, Tanya here for Spellbinders and today I'm doing my 10 cards all the kits video. I am starting out with the Punch and Pierce Frame and Sentiments. This is the large die of the month. Lots of awesome pieces here. I've taken three of the dies to create this piece. I've taken the large outline to do a background for this. And then we're going to drop that center in so that we have a nice white background for this yellow um, gold frame. Now I'm going to glue all of these pieces together using my Barely Art Precision Glue. And if you can see the um, die set next to me, there are lots of shadow and fine detail sentiments to go with this set this month. And they're nice and large. I love that. Now this next step I did was put a piece of vellum behind this and that would be a great start to a shaker card. Here are the ink colors that I'm going to use to ink blend on this five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock that I will cut down to fit a five by seven card. I started out with some lovely yellow. This is a buttercup, I think it's called buttercup from Concord and Ninth. These happen to all be Concord and Ninth colors. You can use ink from whatever company you want. There are lots of fantastic colors out there. And these do kind of follow a rainbow order still. We've got the pink, which is ballet slipper, marmalade, buttercup, and sprout for our inks. And I'm just quickly ink blending those over our cardstock. They do blend together fairly nicely because they do follow the rainbow order. I'm spattering a little water on this to get some fun little ink droplets or sorry water droplets on it and I'm going to trim this down to four and a half by six and a half and then run it through the embossing folder. This is the embossing folder of the month. It's uh, I think it's seamless floral is what it's called. This is the clear stamp and die of the month called Friendship Garden. It has this beautiful kind of folksy grouping of flowers like in a flower garden and I'm stamping this with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink and I decide not to double stamp it. I did stamp it on watercolor paper here. I'm wetting the whole image with some water and now I'm taking some of those same colors that I used to ink blend on the background. So we've got marmalade, ballet slipper, sprout, and buttercup squished onto an acetate sheet here as my palette. And I'm adding those colors on the different kinds of flowers on our watercolor paper. I do come back and add some more of the same colors over the areas to darken them in some areas because as the watercoloring dries, it dries back a little bit so it's a little lighter. And I want those to be intense enough to really show up well on our card. I do love doing this fast and sloppy sort of. It's very um, forgiving. You can just throw the color on there. You don't have to worry about staying in the lines. It has an abstract kind of feel to it and I love that it adds color very quickly. Now we're going to take the stamp and put it back in the misty. I've dried it with my heat tool. I used my anti-static powder tool to make sure that the embossing powder we're going to use doesn't stick where we don't want it. And I'm using the Versafine Claire Nocturne ink again. I did make sure that it was still completely lined up, especially with the warping that happens when you use water and heat. I've added some clear embossing powder and I ran the heat tool over that till it was nice and melted and shiny. Next, I'm taking the sentiment from this uh, stamp set and the coordinating outline. And you saw that maybe you noticed that I used the die to make sure that the lines were perfectly even inside of that die. Sometimes when you have a die that coordinates with an image that has long, thin lines, they don't completely line up with the die if you don't pop them into the die in your stamp positioning tool before you stamp them. That is a great tip. Now we've taken our first layer and adhered that to our five by seven card base. And I adhered our pretty little frame. I love that this looks kind of like little suns in the corner or sunflowers. And I wanted that bright yellow. We need some spring brightness. I'm telling you, it's going to snow another foot tomorrow in my, my yard. 
Um, we're going to add a little more shimmer to this card with some liquid um, or some shimmer watercolor additive. This one happens to be from Concord and Ninth. Lots of companies carry this shimmery watercolor. And I'm using my paintbrush to apply it directly to the flowers all over this image. You could also use a Spectrum Noir sparkle pen or a Wink of Stella. All of those forms of adding sparkle will work beautifully. I'm also using some Spectrum AB gems here to add some sparkle to the centers of the five petal flowers and those cute little flower motifs in the corners. That was card, the front of card number one. I almost forgot. I did some stamping on the inside of this card. I took that same floral bunch from the clear st stamp of the month from Friendship Garden and I put it on a stamp positioning tool here and I added the same colors with my ink cubes which I happen to have in the same colors to apply ink to the stamp and I did just one stamping and I thought that was a perfect accent inside. Now cards two and three are going to be um, using the same background uh, that I'm going to make two cards from. I've taken the embossing folder of the month and opened that out and I'm applying ink to the top portion and then we'll lay our watercolor cardstock inside our panel. This is already cut to four and a half by six and a half and then we'll add a little water, mist it with some fine mist spray and run that through the die cut machine. And there we have our pattern. I love how that applies color to the background and leaves the raised port part white yet. Then we're going to take the Luna paste from um, Simon Hurley that is in the Spellbinder shop in Slippery When Wet, which is this beautiful rich gold color. And I'm going to apply it over the entire panel. Initially, I thought I was just going to put it over the flowers on e in the pattern, but I thought it just needed to go over the entire piece. I found the best way to apply this paste to the raised portions is just using my fingertip with light pressure run over the entire piece. I have to keep adding a little more of this lunar paste to my fingertip to get it to cover the entire card front but it is so worth it and it dries really quickly. I tell you I am loving this color. If you have to choose just one color of the lunar paste to play with I would choose the gold because or the slippery when wet because it just seems to go with so many things. Really truly this is the one I reach for the most. I only have four colors of it. Uh, that is the completed piece and here I'm showing you how easy it is to clean my finger after I'm completed. Now I had to take some of the lunar paste off of my work surface anyway so I sprayed it with some soapy water and just moved my finger around in that. Now we've got two pieces here. We've got a frame that I use, created using the large die of the month and we're taking this piece and we're going to cut it on a diagonal in half. That'll give us two card fronts. Now I'm going to line this up on the piece, the diagonal piece here to make sure that it's going to fit nicely in the four and a half by six and a half inch panel on the front of a five by seven card. I've temporarily taped it to this and then I'm going to trim it off so it will fit perfectly on the card front for my design. Next we're taking that seamless floral background embossing folder of the month again. We're going to emboss two pieces of four and a half by six and a half inch white cardstock. I'm going to adhere the first one to our card base using my Barely Art Precision Glue. My favorite glue ever. I go through a lot of this glue. Yeah. Um, going to adhere that to our card base and then I'm going to um, adhere the next layer. Oh I'm making sure this is going to stick really good aren't I? But with the embossing it does tend to make a little bit of warping. So now we will take this piece and adhere it to the front of the card. I've already made sure that this is going to fit nicely on the four and a half by six and a half inch panel and then I can line this piece up right underneath it. Doesn't even overlap because we carefully planned this before we cut it. Just going to make sure that those edges line up on the bottom 
and we'll put that under the misty for a little heavy weight to make sure it sticks really well. And now I prepared the second five by seven card base here and I'm applying glue to the back of the same embossing or same kind of panel that we put on the other one. And we'll make sure that that is all lined up nicely. I guess I didn't need to leave, leave both of these in here, but oh well. I pretty ruthlessly had edited this video. It was almost three hours worth of video, and I did manage to get it down to less than 50 minutes. I think you should all be very proud of me. <laughs> Next, we're going to use a border from the Create a Slimline Border die set. I've had this in my stash since last year, and it makes some gorgeous lacy edges. I cut a piece with vellum here and will adhere that to the back of this diagonal piece. I'm just going to line it up with the edge of the diagonal piece and then trim off the edges using a long bladed scissor. This is a fantastic way to mark a transition between papers to add a lacy edge and it trims off very easily. Now we'll line this up and glue it down to our card front, making sure that the edges line up with the four and a half by six and a half inch embossed panel that we've already done. Now I did use the same embossing folder for both the white background and for this beautifully inked panel, but you could use a different embossing folder if you wanted. Now I'm pulling out some embellishments. These are halfback pearls from Trinity Stamps. They are called Something New and they're in a pearly white color. I'm just going to alternate two similar sized, uh, two of the close together sizes, there we go, <laughs> alternating those across the centers of this lacy border. And I think that adds a beautiful detail to the front of the cart. Just pop, uh, makes that pop just a little more. Now I thought that was going to be enough, but I decided I needed a little more. Oh, here I'm going to find my sentiments. We're going to use Hello You, and I've cut the shadow elements from a shimmery white cardstock and the, the fine details from a shimmery gold cardstock, and these both seem to match our colors very nicely in the rest of the card. Just using little dots of glue on the back of these fine detail sentiments before I add them to the shadows. And here we're going to use that extra border. This is just a dotted edge border. It only cuts on one side. So when I cut this out, I put it close to the edge of the cardstock. So I had this narrow strip to apply to the front of our card. I've already glued all the elements to the card except for this border. And so I have to go in and carefully trim that off to line up with the edges of the matted panels. Now we'll take those sentiments and line them up nicely right by that gold border we added. And I want to raise that hello up just a little bit so the drop down part of the Y has room to fit above the edge of that border. Just going to get those lined up the way I want them, put a heavyweight block on them, and there we have our completed card. Next, for card number, is this card number three? Yes. So there are a couple of dies that are separate from the large grouping for this flower which um, you can partially stamp that larger image to get these pieces that we're going to die cut. There's a coordinating die that matches these two flowers. And then there's another die that you can see right next to it that cuts out a smaller bunch that's on the lower left portion of that stamp. So you can just partially or selectively stamp and die cut those. I happened to heat emboss mine with some gold embossing powder. And now I'm using the Distress pencils. These are watercolor pencils. I had put the shavings in this, um, I think it's supposed to be an alcohol ink uh, palette, but it has these little wells that's exactly the right number of wells for all of the Distress pencils that are currently available. 
And you want those pencils to be very sharp and you don't want to waste the crayon or the pencil because it is all pencil and no wood. So I just took the shavings and popped them into that palette, which I had seen Amy Rice Avi do on Prairie Paper and Ink. And I knew I had to do it. So I was super glad to find that palette when I was out shopping with the girls um, in February and took that home and made our cute little panel. I've actually used those pencil shavings more than I've used the pencils. Still loving it. I love that they're the oxide colors and I use Tattered Rose and I think that is Garden Green in the, the, the leaves. I'm, I'm not pot, not Garden Green. Mowed grass. <laughs> Mowed lawn? Mowed lawn. There we go. Do I know the names of the inks? Mm, yes, I do. <laughs> I lined those along the edge after I finished um, cutting and coloring them. Now we're using a Simon Hurley uh, sentiment set, Everyday Sentiments. This is dies that cut a detailed word and a shadow and these are a little chunkier than the ones that we used from the large die of the month sometimes you want a more substantial sentiment and this has a bunch of them I'm also using the slippery when wet lunar paste to create some gold that matches the rest of our card and I'm going to die cut the sentiments the finer detail ports parts with the finer detail dies or so you on the slippery when wet uh, inked up or pasted up <laughs> cardstock we have the little tittle for the eye even and we're going to glue those together I did cut a couple of layers for that shadow background as usual because I like a little extra dimension I love that there are bigger sections on these letters to help get the glue on there more easily Although I just love that this is a big, bold die cut sentiment because I thought that's what I needed on this card design. Some of them go well with a beautiful, dainty, swoopy, cursive look and some just need a more substantial looking sentiment. And this really filled the bill. We almost have our happy put together. Just lining this up. And my fine tip tweezers, my reverse tweezers, really are helpful for putting together these tiny detailed dies. Now I'm ready to glue those on the front of our card. Just carefully placing those inside that inset area that the pretty little frame created. There's my extra layer for more dimension on the front of our card. And I can't remember if I added any extra details on that one. Let me take a peek. Hmm, I've got my stack of cards right here next to me. Nope, I just did the words. And now that I have those centered nicely in the card, I'm going to put a heavyweight block on there to make sure that it sticks really well to that embossed background. Then we'll take one of the extra flowers and add that to the inside of the card in the lower right corner, just to bring a little bit of detail from the outside of the card to the inside. I love that that makes a nice coordination. All right, for card number four, we have the satin pastels. I think this is, uh, I think it's called mint or green. It comes in a four pack and they just finally got them back in stock. And in the Spellbinder shop and in um, some of the other shops, it's sold out because it's gorgeous. I love this stuff. It um, has, there's a pink, a green, a peachy color, and a rosy color. No, a lavender color. And they foil so well. Here I'm doing a full panel with the Glimmer of the Month set this month. And it's beautiful. It's these groupings of leaves. And there happens to be a coordinating stencil for this. There are two parts to this stencil. It's one sheet, but there's two parts to it. So you get two tone leaves. And I'm using, this is a craft mat that I picked up. It's an off brand for uh, silhouette. And I decided to use it like everyone else's sticky mats. Um, I am frankly loving it. <laughs> it's a 12 by 12 and I could cut it down, but I chose not to because I do tend to make large cards and sometimes it's nice to have that bigger area to work with. 
So I lined up the first portion of that stencil and I used scattered straw. And then I have shabby shutters here. These are both Distress Oxide inks. And so they do blend just effortlessly. And I'm adding those to the two sections of leaves that I created on this white cardstock. Look at that. And the, I hear the secret to taking paper off of sticky mats is to roll the sticky mat away from the paper, not the other way around, to avoid curling and warping. Worked great. In the Glimmer of the Month kit, there is a coordinating die that will cut out several of these beautiful little leaves that you have foiled and now stenciled. This is genius. I'm telling you, I love this. So look at all these cute little leaves that I've die cut. It only cuts um, one of each size. We've got a one petal, a two petal, a three petal, a four petal, and two, four, six petal, I think. And I cut, I, excuse me, <laughs> I foiled this twice. So now I'm cutting out twice. Then I decided that this looked like a cute border for a card. So I'm going to fussy cut out along this edge so that we have a beautiful um, element for a card. I honestly was going to use just the leaves that were die cut, but this, this looks so pretty. I'm going to use it with the die of the month, the punch and pierce borders. And look at those. There's so many beautiful detailed elements of this die set. And you can use those with this shaped piece or without. Here I've taped all of the pieces I'm going to use together onto, uh, around that frame. And I'm going to use this really pale green cardstock to die cut some pieces. Now I end up only using one of them. I'm going to take the solid shape and die cut that from some vellum and back our detailed piece. Just going to use strategic placement of our glue over those pierced areas. And that will fit just perfectly behind our detail piece. Now that we have this assembled, we can move on to how we're going to create our card. And we're going to take this beautiful leafy element that I've trimmed down to four and a half inches wide. I did use a die that is an A7 layering die to cut that down. <clears throat> and next we're going to use the 3D patchwork um, embossing folder of the month. Again, I've taken a piece of watercolor cardstock. Now this is a watercolor cardstock that I found didn't work well for my style of watercolor color. So I'm using it as a nice heavyweight cardstock for my, my panels here. We've got this all embossed. I've already die cut it down to four and a half by six and a half inches. And now I can start adhering my layers. I did put some extra cardstock scraps behind the back of this because again it's super embossed and I want some extra sturdiness and a little height on our card. So I'm going to adhere this to a 5x7 card base which is some heavy white white cardstock that is cut to 10 by 7 inches scored at 5 inches and creased well with a bone folder. I am adding an extra piece of cardstock behind this panel to make it all even since the uh, layers were not even otherwise. And now we're going to use some Nouveau embellishment mousse. I've had this in my stash for a while, so it had gotten pretty dry in my stash. I took some water and just spritzed it into my container and I'm using the same technique I used with the lunar paste only this isn't that creaminess. Um, I have to work it up with my finger a little bit but with that little bit of water it works perfectly. I've had to rehab some of my embellishment mousses in the past putting some water that I've boiled into it and letting and chopping it up and really working it back into a smooth paste but this works this works great. Now we're going to take last month's die of the month. This was, um, I can't remember what it said, but I did show it to you just a second ago and I will have it linked in the list description box below. I had some leftover flowers from my creations from last month and I'm adding those to add just that pop of detail on the front that it was missing without the flowers. I just love to work in previous kits 
dies and stamps and all the other things because we don't buy them to just use them for a month. We buy them to keep in our stash and keep using over and over again. Even just these 10 cards isn't enough for me to be happy because I like to keep using things. Now, maybe you're the type of person who likes to use them for your month or your, your session, and then you look to rehome them, whether you sell them or give them to a friend or a family member that you know would enjoy them. Whatever works for you. I know a lot of us are kind of collectors when it comes to crafting pro uh, product, but I like to use my stuff too. These are some really cute flowers, um, and I'm glad I had a bunch of them left over because they work with lots of different designs. Now we need to add a sentiment. So I've picked one from the Friendship Garden stamp and die set, and I'm doing the same thing um, I had done earlier. I stamped a sentiment and then the coordinating label die around it, sorry, label stamp, and then we'll die cut everything after we've heat embossed it and I chose to use some gold embossing powder this time. I'm just going to heat that until it is raised and shiny and I did use the same watercolor paper I had used for the embossed background on this piece. Now I'm going to take some shabby shutters. Oh no, sorry, I have to die cut our element first and then I take some shabby shutters distress oxide ink and ink this all up so it stands out really nicely on our card base. I did take my cleaning rag and just wipe over the top of that embossing to make sure that it was nice and vibrant and removed any of the distress oxide ink that may have stuck to it. Now I'm using the liquid glue here to center to adhere this to the card front. I'm kind of centering it below all of our flowers and not covering all of those fine details. It did cover some of the embossing, but yeah, worked well. I'm going to take some of those leaves that we die cut from the main portion, and I'm going to add those to the inside of the card um, just to bring the inside of the card into coordination with the front. I love that little thin die cut elements fit perfectly inside of our card and add an extra special detail. Just playing around with placement of these leaves, you could do it in lots of different ways. And I will use these die cut leaves, different versions of them in cards um, later in the video. I'm not completely happy with that, but it turned out good enough. We're gonna let it be. On to cards number five and six. We're going to use the 3D patchwork uh, embossing folder. And now I have the later Gator Lunar Paste. I'm going to try something. I've not tried this before. I'm going to take a bit of this paste and smear it onto a piece of acetate. And I'm going to pick it up with my brayer and apply it to the word side <laughs> for lack of a better way to think of it, to of the embossing folder because I want this to be in the background and have the raised elements stay white. Now, if I had to do this again, I would water this down a little bit so it stays wet longer. It did work out in the long run. This is plain white cardstock. I spritzed some water on the cardstock and I think in future I would spritz it on the panel that I had just brayered with the lunar paste. And now I'm going to peel this off after I've run it through the die cut machine. And you saw that it tried to stick to the embossing folder. It did work out in the long run. We're going to take some precision layering dies in the mini slimline sizes and die cut two panels. We're going to make two different cards with this in a mini slimline size. And I'm going to pop these back in the embossing folder just to, after I've die cut them, just to make the embossing nice and extra bold again. Now that we have these re-embossed after they've been die cut, I'm going to cut some layering panels. Now this isn't available anymore, but like I said, I like to reuse my supplies. This was from, I think last year or the year before in July, and it makes this beautiful uh, scalloped edge. Now I've done one with the, that scalloped edge and I'm doing one with the precision layering dies. If you don't have the other die set, um, you can, either of these die sets, you can just cut some straight edged mats that are just like, I think this may be three eighths inch bigger than the uh, embossed panel that I'm using. 
We'll adhere these together to make our front panel for our 3x6 mini slimline cards. This is the size that I prefer. This is not really a mailable size unless you put it in an envelope that is at least, um, I think it has to be three and a half inches wide on the short end. That is the minimum size you can put through the mail. I have again used a um, retired gift card holder notching die to cut the inside of my card because I need thank you cards. I'm going on a trip again and I will be needing to have some thank you cards available for the people that I encounter when I'm traveling. Here I have, um, those aren't actually gift cards that I'm using here. Those are um, the cards you, like your hotel key. My husband stays out of town a lot. And he um, inevitably brings a couple of those home every few months. Anyway, they make great placeholders when you're adhering things to the front of your card after you've already put those um, die cut elements on the inside. And that's the best time to put them on before you do all of your layers. Next, we are using some um, more dies from the large die of the month to create our sentiments here. We've got thank you, and I'm layering all of this together. I hope you aren't bored watching me layer all of these elements together. Um, I know there are a lot of new people to paper crafting and to the Spellbinders kits who watch my videos, and I believe this is helpful to them. Please give me some comments on what you enjoy about my videos and what you would wish I would leave out. Um, these are super long videos. They've been very popular and I will continue to make them as long as they are very popular. It's a, it's a long video process and a long voiceover process. Sometimes I feel like I run out of things to say. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I am just so excited about spring coming. We in the upper, I live in northern Minnesota. Um, it is April 3rd right now when I'm doing the voiceover. And I still have at least two to two and a half feet of snow in the yard. And we're expected to get another foot of snow. I mean, I'm used to having snowstorms this time of year here, but usually... The snow has all melted at least once by now. Yeah, it hasn't this year. So we're about to get doused again. I'm so ready for spring. We're going to use the Everyday Sentiments uh, set again to die cut a thicker thank you. So we have two different thank yous here. I just got this die set myself. So of course it's... Um, definitely it's in my oh I want to use this now pile <laughs> but I think this is going to be one that I reach for over and over again it's got a lot of very basic sentiments that I use frequently and they're a nice bold sentiment so that they are easily readable and sometimes you really want a big statement sentiment I think I said that earlier in this video but it bears repeating they are great so if you haven't gotten this die set, it might be one you want to add. Do you remember me talking about the separate dies for the Friendship Guardian Garden earlier? These are the smaller bunch that I die cut after, or that I created at the same time as the double bloom one. And we're going to use, I think, most of these on this card front. I'm just tucking them under the sentiment to add some floral elements. And on the previous card, you saw me use some of the uh, flowers from last month's kit. Again, I still have a few of those left. They'll probably make appearances on some of my cards here in the future. You know, I had planned to have this video up on the first of the month. However, my oldest son and his family surprised us with a visit on this weekend. So they came on Friday and then my husband reminded me we needed to go out of town on Sunday to go to his grandmother's 104th birthday party. Can you imagine? 104. Yeah, my husband and I come from some people that live a long time. So uh, we can't retire too early. <laughs> um, I'm adding some cute little baubles to this card. These are the gorgeous um, gold, I think they're called. And I added those with liquid glue. Here we've got a rainbow pattern for our card number seven. And these are the colors I'm using. 
I already ink blended them on the panel and we're going to take the glimmer of the month it's called glimmer leaf panel look at that I saw it and said it out loud <laughs> we're going to glimmer these or hot foil these in matte no satin gold foil and I'm going to do this four times on this panel I'm just going to tack it down for the first one I'm creating a hinge in the lower right corner of the panel here and we'll run that through the glimmer foil after I've added a couple of pieces of tape to secure it I'm going to put that on my heated panel or my heated platform I have the three cardstock shims that I need with the two different plastic shims that come with the kit or come with the platform run that through my die cut machine and that is foiling number one I'm going to do this three more times so you have a good look at how this is done and you can see that I move where my hinge is I want to be careful not to put the tape over the already foiled parts because it could remove the foiling it doesn't always it's not a for sure going to take your foiling off but it very well could and I am showing you here also that you can glimmer foil all over distress oxide inking and plain like dye ink inking it works very well I am using hammer mill uh, cardstock um, I have tried ink blending over the Spellbinder's specialty cardstock. It doesn't blend the same way. It kind of feels a bit like Yupo paper, which is a plastic paper, and it always glimmers absolutely stunningly. But I like the versatility of the hammer mill for ink blending and watercoloring and that kind of thing because the specialty cardstock isn't great for that. So if you just plan on glimmer foiling, that is the best. If you're planning on doing other things to your um, paper, then um, you might want to try another kind of cardstock. Okay, now that I have all of that glimmered, I've trimmed it down to four and a quarter, excuse me, four and a half by six and a half to a, a nice layer for a five by seven card. And we're going to pull out the very new Stylish Oval Hello Floral. This is from the Stylish Oval collection that's coming out on April 10th. I love this collection. This is, I'm using two pieces of that collection on this card, and you'll see another video featuring the Stylish Oval collection in a few days. Um, we have all of these beautiful layers for this floral gr grouping. The stem has two different styles of leaves and dies to cut all of those out. So you can add extra detail on those and I've layered those right on top of the um, stem I already cut out and I've assembled all of the flowers. We're going to use the 3D patchwork 3D embossing folder of the month and the stylish ovals dies here. I die cut the oval first and then I embossed it and I added another piece of cardstock on the back of that for a little extra dimension and for a little more stability with all of that embossing. And then I thought, oh my, um, I really liked the idea of a white stem with vellum flowers, but this does not stand out on my um, embossed oval. So I used some mica spray stain here. This was flickering candle. If you have the yellow version that came out this year and that you can still purchase, I don't remember what that one's called. Um, you could use that color. I think this is a beautiful yellow. And I love some mica spray stain. I just love it. Um, so any opportunity I have to use it, I use it. Here we have our assembled vellum flowers. And we're adding those to the little indicated spots on the, the stem. And we have this little bell flower that also fits in perfectly. And I use some shimmery white cardstock along with shimmery gold and some mirror gold cardstock for the centers of these cards or excuse me, these flowers. I did use two of those bell-shaped flowers. Now for the sentiment, we're going to use a sentiment from the Glimmer of the Month kit. This says, have an unbelievable day. Um, and I am using a die from one of the mini, sincere, I think this is the mini sincere sentiments, but it's got a great uh, dies that coordinate with many of the sentiments in the Spellbinder shop. This one has a couple of dovetail uh, or fishtail, however you refer to them. 
uh, dies in it and that's what I used. I used some partial die cutting in order to get the length that I wanted and that means you just only cover the parts that you want to die cut with your plate, the top plate, and then reposition it and do the same to get your length that you want. Now I did have some purple section of that glimmer foiled and ink blended panel and I used the coordinating die for the leaves and die cut these purple leaves out to add to the inside of the card. Now I would have used a whole rainbow of, of those leaves had I had enough scraps of the different colors but I wasn't going to glimmer foil and ink blend just to get a rainbow set of leaves. You sure could but I chose not to. Next we're going to make card number, is this card number eight? I think so. So I have some watercolor cardstock again here. I'm kind of on a watercolor kick lately. I have gold heat embossed that. We've got our distress pencil shavings here and I've spritzed the entire palette with some water and then I'm going to use various colors to paint this floral background. The first time I painted this one I did a very sloppy uh, abstract feel. This one I'm trying to stay within the lines and I'm using some bolder colors. I think the other version I used some dye ink that was some really pale colors and I think this is a really easy um, image to paint. Florals are very forgiving especially since they are a great organic image and I wanted a purple that was a little more red but not like picked raspberry red. So I added two colors here together to make the purple I wanted and now I'm going to use kind of a I think that's salvage patina but I'm not positive. I don't have these labeled so I'm just kind of guessing and now I'm going to use the same colors that I painted with to spatter all over our card. I like how that looks. Now that it's dry I'll use the coordinating die to die cut this and I'll also stamp and die cut a sentiment using the same method that I did on a few other cards. We're also going to use the essential arches here to do a dome shape vellum to back this and as you can see I did think I was going to use it on that rainbow bent blended panel that didn't really work out but I did want to shorten this arch because it would fit the um, image better. We've got a four and a half by six and a half inch piece of cardstock here. I can't remember did I use heavyweight white cardstock or did I use watercolor paper on that? Let me pull that card out so I can take a peek. And that is a heavyweight white cardstock. And I use the 3D embossing folder of the month, the 3D patchwork, which is gorgeous. And I didn't do anything extra special to this other than embossing. I glue this to the front of the card. Again, it's a five by seven card base, 10 inches by seven inches, scored at five inches and creased well with my bone folder. And I have added a little extra um, dimension behind this panel that I created with the vellum and the floral garden die cut and watercolored piece. I wanted it to stand it up a little bit off of that embossing and we have the heat embossed stamped sediment that says happy birthday to you. Next I'm taking Lost Shadow Distress Inks. This is not the Distress Oxide it's the straight up dye ink and I stamped that once. I didn't re-ink this, I just re-pushed down on it to get my stamped image on the inside. All right, on to card number nine. I love these beautiful pierced patterns and I took a piece of cardstock and I moved the same piercing piece down the panel, roughly spacing them evenly, and then cut this down to Oh, this is going on a four bar sized card. I love to make different size cards. I really do. Um, and four bar cards are three and a half by five inches. So this must be four and three quarters by three and a quarter inches. And I did die cut, or excuse me, cut down another panel to go behind it so that we could easily glue it down to our panel and um, have a little extra dimension. Now I'm taking 
three sentiments from the Friendship Garden stamp set, and I'm lining them up in those areas that are not punched and pierced. I thought that would be the perfect placement for some sentiments on the front of the card. Just using some uh, Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. Yeah, that's the color. <laughs> or Onyx Black, whichever you use. These are hard to come by ink pads sometimes. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm inking those several times and stamping those sentiments in those open spaces that I left on the front of the card. This is a really simple card. I'm going to glue this to the front of the card panel that I have already cut the gift card holder piece on the inside. Again, I need thank you cards. This one doesn't say thank you. I don't know why I decided to go ahead and do it that way, but c'est la vie. Um, we're going to add some more of those flowers from last month's small die of the month. I've got two branches and then I'm just putting a single flower right in the middle. And that completes card number nine. Card number 10, I just wanted to do some more ink blending and I really love the embossing folder. So I have Mermaid Lagoon, Peacock Feathers and Cracked Pistachio. These are all distress inks. I am ink blending on a piece of watercolor cardstock. I'm going to use some pearlized water here and spritz that on my panel. And we're going to emboss that with the seamless floral background embossing folder of the month. Turns out gorgeous. And we're going to use the lunar paste again in the slippery when wet and my fingertip to just add some beautiful gold to the raised portions of the embossing. I think this turns out magnificent. And sometimes you just need a nice background with a lot of boldness and then a big bold sentiment on the front. I'm going to use the Simon Hurley Everyday Sentiments dies again to create a thank you card because I love that. You can see that I did use this watercolor paper to create a different background previously, but I don't think I'm going to use that background again. So I used the other side of the watercolor paper. Just like your regular papers, watercolor paper has two sides. So if you don't like what happened on the first one, there you go. Oh, I lied. I didn't use the Simon Hurley. I used the large die of the month to create a thank you sentiment. And I again used the lunar paste to create the gold portion of this sentiment. We'll just glue those to the front of the card. And I did not put anything on the inside of the card this time. I left room for a thank you note. This that completes all 10 of the cards for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment and let me know what you think of these videos. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, now is the perfect time to do that. I welcome all new subscribers and comments. Um, if you're interested in any of the product that I use today, check that description box below. I always have them listed and linked there, all of them that I can find anyway. And here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Until next time, bye-bye.